uh, to be nice and soft and wet that you're applying it onto. That's what uh, the sprayer is. You just be able to fill that up. There's a hose right to your left on the ground. The nozzle's inside a little two inch pipe. And the valve is kind of laying on the ground there. Is it the same material as the sink? No. This is uh, concrete. All the sinks are concrete? No, not all of them. This one mm -hmm. just is. The cob wouldn't hold up over time with the constant water mm -hmm. exposure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So what's an alternative for sinks? For sinks? It just depends on, I guess, what what you're looking for in durability. I mean, you could have a hardwood sink, you can have a concrete sink, you can have a... Um, you could have... We had one cob sink before, it just didn't hold up very well. We didn't expect it to, but we figured we... Looks like this thing is toast. Are there any other sprayers around? Mm, there was there was. Yeah. Okay. There's a water bottle. Yeah, you can just kind of plop it on. Oh, there we go. So just make sure that you. There we go. Spray the wall down real well. Ideally, you'd be working on this daily. You wouldn't ever have to come back and spray. But if you do need to leave the project for whatever reason. Uh, and you can wet this down quite a bit. Anywhere where you're going to be applying material to, uh, you want to make sure that it's nice and, and pliable. Probably never going to be as pliable as it was the day you were working on it or the following day, but um, Ideally, you'd be avoiding this, but you can see now where I can yeah. start getting my fingers into this again. And it's another technique and that you can also employ is that if you are putting onto a semi-dry surface, you can come by with a stick or your thumb mm. and create a keyway, like I was saying. So this kind of helps work it in to the uh, lower layer. You know, that material sinks right into that opening and creates another place for it to grab onto. And then, oops, did they all end up on either side? Would you yeah. mind handing me a couple of bricks? They actually wanted some on here, and I didn't mention that. I did, I guess, say these four tarps, but we just got into the rhythm and crossword messed up our system. <laughs> okay. Okay, that's good for now, but eventually we're going to want to get more over here. Yeah. Okay, and so you're always working with a partner. These walls are the hardest to get to, and therefore um, they're the last ones to be done because I don't think anyone really wants to work in the way of the sink. But you can stand on that box up to a point, but at some point it's going to be uh, kind of a leaning, uh -huh. sitting on here, rigging something up, which mm -hmm. allows us to get into this space. So. Um, I'm pretty, might, I'm pretty could, small. I can probably actually here. straddle and yeah. sit on the yeah. sink. I might be a really good person yeah. for being here. This is pretty sturdy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, yeah. 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 put one foot here, yeah. maybe. Okay. Yeah. This work? Uh, yeah, I'm very oh, solid here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that might work on this side. We could set up a little scaffolding. So one person on that side, but I can actually sit up on the sink. I've got totally enough space for me. Cool. Well, everybody can find their little niche and space, and then okay. we can go from there. But what I usually do, and there's no set technique, I usually take a brick, rip it in half, and John, you're going to do the same thing on that side. Just rip it lengthwise, uh, and then stick it right in front of mine. Perfect, yeah. And then the idea is that we're working these together. Work with someone that you like, because you're going to be touching their fingers a lot and, and fondling them. <laughs> <laughs> And so just, you know, you really want to work it into what's going on in front of you and then work it in to what's below here. And we should do a little bit of extra work today on just making sure we're incorporating it yeah. into, into there. And essentially, and again, you can make up your own technique. The key is, is to keep these walls plumb. And plumb, um, by definition, is uh, parallel to gravity. And so... We want these walls to be straight up and down. We don't want there to be depressions in one part and bulges in the next. But we need to understand, the too, is that this wall was designed to go concave and then convex. 
So there is supposed to be uh, a slight uh, non-rectilinear look here, so keep that in mind. A good way to keep um, an eye on this is to literally keep an eye on this, and it's to kind of get to the side of the wall and look at it from this angle, and then you can really <coughs> see where the depressions and the um, fat spots are. Whereas I'm looking at it straight on, I might not know that this is coming out in this way. So you really need to get intimate with the wall and move around it. And material can always be taken off or more material can be put on, but it's a lot more efficient if it happens right the first time. So this isn't a race by any means. Mm -hmm. Over the years, I apologize in advance to the men, but over the years it seems like women have <laughs> a better eye, more patience, just kind of a knack at being really good daubers and tobbers, but there is hope for the men for sure. Um, but if you're just like a hacker and you like to mix and get dirty and haul shit, then you might want to be on the mixing crew and let the more patient types. Uh, you might have said this already, but on this wall there's like a big crack. Do you just fix that at the end or is it better to try and like fill that in now? It's all going to get smeared over, but while we're working on it, I think it's always nice if it's a big crack to go ahead and stuff the material in there. But again, making sure that you you uh, so really wet it. it. Yeah. yeah. And if when we were building our house, for example, when we got to um, uh, an area where there was a, a header where a window was going to go in where we had a piece of wood all the way across, we would stop construction when we got up to yeah, it, let it dry. Well, it doesn't really continue. work though. Uh, the bottle, so. Tim, do you have any other water bottles you want filled up? I think that's the only functioning one we got right now, and there's water around the front side of this structure. I usually go up two, two levels and then come back and work it all out and smooth it. Yeah, no, I wasn't so much. I was just saying it loud so the people here wasn't just saying that. No. <laughs> up another level. <laughs> Like yeah, and then I'm going to come back, and that's the kind of the, when it takes the most time to. It just seems more efficient for whatever reason. It might not be, but that's just the way. Everyone will get their own. What, where'd you get the sand and clay from? The sand comes from a friend's farm in Salitrales, which you come through on your way here. Um, I don't know if the bus stops there anymore. It used to, but it's about. Does it at that kind of real small town? Yeah, yeah that's the name of that town is Salitrales, and Salitre means clay in Spanish. So it's a place with a lot of clay. And the sand we get from Periscal. We used to get it ourselves here from the rivers, but the more we built, the more concern we had for the impact on the streams here. So we. And the poop? Poop comes from the farm just down the road, about a five minute walk from here. The guy's mm -hmm. name is Chilo. It's Marcos's father for anyone that's met Marcos. He's got the Spanish school in town and the goalie for the soccer team. You played soccer with him that one day. I think he was on the field when you guys were down there. And the dried plant material? The dry plant material, we get off the side of the road, um, or just in various people's pasture. We used to use only rice straw, um, which is generally harvested around January in this region. So we would collect as much rice straw as we could during right after the harvest. But when we were still new, it was a real pain in the ass to keep it nice and dry for very long without much covered roof area. So. We started looking for other options, and this stuff is called Brisanta, and it's a um, prolific grass around here that's really strong. I don't know how you're doing this. And so we started, moved to that, and it's done really well. So we're able to go out and get it any but, time but of the like year any, now. Any type of straw we put in, or? Generally, yeah, you just want to make sure it's strong, whatever it is. So straw is, I think, the most commonly used material. It's, you know, it's strong material, but you can certainly supplement it with other, with other plant material based on what's available to you. 
where you live. Yeah, so we, 